Machine learning, it's taken over our lives in sometimes very subtle ways. Of course, you have the Teslas and the email spam filters of the world, but have you ever considered clothes design, novel writing, or even finding the optimal time for you to wake up in the morning? It's already had a massive impact on how we experience the world, and that impact is only set to grow. I think you know me well enough by now, as well as by the title, that this isn't just a video on the advances of machine learning, but also an exploration of where and whether quantum fits into the broader machine learning picture. Let's get into it. The truth. To start off, it's useful to have an understanding of what machine learning actually is. It seems like a very abstract idea that we could somehow train a computer to recognize patterns. I mean, even just thinking about it sounds absurdly complicated. While there are a variety of machine learning techniques out there, in this video, we'll focus on neural networks, and even more in particular, a convolutional neural network, which is especially useful for image classification. So what is a neural network? The original idea behind neural networks was to model how the human brain works where layers of neurons fire signals to each other to, in order to achieve a desired outcome. It turns out that we're still a far away from simulating the human brain, as you may have already guessed. And the term neural network was likely created to make the field sound more interesting. Nonetheless, neural networks have still proven to be very useful in our day-to-day -day lives. After all, why would we need a password to our phones when we could unlock our phones using our eyes? But how does a neural network actually function? Okay, I won't get into the nitty gritty of the calculus of bad propagation, but the basics behind it are this. There are layers of nodes like you can see on screen right now, and we call these nodes neurons, and they're lined up in order. Each neuron in the first layer, designated in blue as the input layer, is connected to each neuron in the next layer, which we, call, uh, which we show in gray called the hidden layer. This is true for all layers of the neural network. Each of the nodes is assigned a weight and a bias, which control what the network classifies images as. For any input image, the neural network spits out what it believes the image is. For, for a model of images from zero to nine, if we throw it a seven and we classify that image of a seven as a four, that is our model thinks that image is of a seven is actually a four, we can make changes to the weights and biases of each individual node to incentivize the network to classify the image as a seven next time. This part, this part gets done through backpropagation, which is just a bunch of calculus and applications of the chain rule for those of you familiar. I guess high school calculus wasn't so use, useless after all. If you would like to learn more about weights, biases, backpropagation, or even activation functions, check out the article linked in the description below. Now that we have an understanding of how CNNs function, we're ready to apply some quantum layers. Quantum layers with the power of Penny Lane or any other quantum machine learning library will be indistinguishable from other classical layers. Classical here referring to non-quantum. How do we incorporate such an idea though? It turns out that there are a few ways to incorporate this quantum layer into the model. One such example shown here being quantum pre-processing of the images. In this example, images are first passed through a quantum layer before being input into a fully classical model. The idea behind such an approach would be to increase conversion times of the classical model. This idea has been shown by the team at Xanadu to have a small improvement on the accuracy of the model over time. Another possibility is to have a quantum layer integrated into the machine learning model where there are inputs and outputs to the quantum layer as shown here. So this is cool and all in theory, but we're still yet to cover the workings of each quantum node. On each node, a quantum circuit is run, like the one you see here. Each circuit is initialized to state zero, and a unitary gate, parameterized by some value theta, is applied onto the circuit. The important thing to note is that as we change theta, we change the state that our qubits are in, meaning that our expectation values are continuously dependent on the input value of theta. Quantum is of course probabilistic, meaning that we have to take the average value known as the expectation value of the circuit to get an accurate measurement of the state. The key thing to note is that quantum circuits are, that are parameterized unitaries are differentiable, 
meaning that the same rules that we use for stochastic gradient descent and machine learning apply to these quantum circuits as well. Thus, we can incorporate quantum layers into pre-existing models. But does this have any real significance on improving current machine learning models? In short, results so far have been marginal at best. In my research and talking with industry professionals, it seems that use cases are currently extremely limited and that it would take a lot more than what has been produced so far for a hybrid machine learning stack to be integrated. Another limitation that Nathan Killerin brings up is the fact that we need to find gradients of complex interfering amplitudes in large dimensional spaces, which is often intractable to complete classically, possibly providing an avenue for quantum machine learning to grow. That's it for me for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.